For Ron Answers Only, please no give offense. a warm welcome to <laughs> Chris Duffy. Woo! Yay! Hello, hello. Thank you all so much for coming. Oh, this is such a joy. Um, so many friendly faces. I'm so excited for us to talk about dogs with you. Um, I want to say, if you're here, actually, I know a lot of people are watching online in the live stream, but if you're here in person and you have a question that is already burning for uh, our scientists about dogs, there is a little bit of paper on your table. There should be a pen. If you write it down and then just hold it up, we have our volunteer here who will um, come around and grab that from you. So uh, I see some people, yeah, just make sure he sees your hands. Great. Um, okay. Thank you so much, everybody, for being here. I am your host, Chris Duffy, and this is our first ever in-person edition of Wrong Answers Only. Yeah. Our, That's exciting. This That's show is something. produced by Lab X, which is a public engagement program at the National Academy of Sciences. And for those of you who have never seen the show before, the National Academy of Sciences is a private, nonprofit institution that gives the government objective, evidence-based advice. And LabX is the team at the NAS that takes all that fancy science and makes it fun. So they create video games, they create board games, shows, video series to make it digestible. And on today's show, you, all of you, and our panel of comedians are gonna learn all about dog cognition. And we will also, I love one soft clap. Thank you so much. <laughs> Already the, the faintest, great. Um, <laughs> yeah, well, you know what? Let's just get ourselves a tiny bit more warmed up. I, I'm going to say dog cognition again, and then you actually applaud. I, I, that wasn't meant to be an applaud, applause line, but one person has made it into one. So let's do it for now, everyone. And you are going to learn about dog cognition. Yeah. yeah. That feels right. That feels right. And we will also find out what our guest scientist is like when she is not doing her research. Um, and I want to point out, this is an interactive show. So if you're watching online, we want you to be involved. We want to hear your jokes, your questions, and we want you to play these games right along with us. In fact, uh, comment as you are watching with your questions, and I am going to see them, and we will ask um, we'll try and pull up as many as we can and ask them during the show. Um, we also want to hear your jokes and your comments and anything else that's going on. And if you are here in person, um, we're collecting your questions right now, but also a few times during the show, I'm going to go to you to uh, see what you think. Um, so stay on your toes. Okay, let's, uh, let's get into it. Uh, today, we have an incredible, 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 incredible panel of comedians who are going to be playing. We've got Josh Gondelman, Karen Chi, and CJ Hunt. Please give a big round of applause. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Please come out. Thank you. Hello. Hello. Thank you. Too long a handshake. Really wish these handshakes had been shorter. Okay. Uh, three absolutely progressively worse handshakes from the panel. Uh, I'm so glad to have you here. Yes, they were all wet to different degrees. Um, Josh, uh, just so we can make sure that your sound levels are working, how, how are you doing today? Honestly, it really boosted my self-esteem to know that I had the best handshake of the three. Yes, oh, it was bad, but it was not as bad oh, as the others. Yeah, that's, that's okay. something I can get. Great, great, great. And uh, Karen, how are you doing? I um, what made your hand wet? Um, <laughs> uh, no, water. Okay, great. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I will say, the way you answered that did not make me believe it was water. <laughs> Um, definitely felt like you were coming up with an answer. And uh, CJ, how do you feel about uh, having the worst handshake of the three? I'm spiraling. Yeah, I'm sure you are. You're doing well. Yeah, you've done well. Yeah. Well, you know what they say about a good host is uh, in, make sure that the panel of comedians immediately feels uncomfortable and spirals into <laughs> self-doubt as soon as you bring them out. And that's a promise that I make anytime I ask someone to do a show. So now let's find out all about today's expert. Listen, I, I could tell you about her myself, but rather than that, Let's have her tell you about herself. Here's a video. Dog cognition research is a real science using you know, actual behavioral and observational methods and um, to, to really find out more of this thing that people are inherently curious about, which is you know, what's going on with their dogs, what's in the mind of their dogs, what are they thinking, um, and also sort of how we can improve their relationship. But also it's something that in small pieces people can do at home, right? They can turn a more kind of inquisitive gaze toward their dogs and find out themselves a little bit about um, their mind. And then in the end, I think this extends not just to finding out about the minds of dogs, but also learning more and being curious about the minds of all non-humans, essentially. Hi, I'm Alexandra Horowitz. I'm a senior research fellow and head of the Dog Cognition Lab at Barnard College. 
and I'm the author of several books on dogs and dog mind, including most recently, The Year of the Puppy, How Dogs Become Themselves. Alexandra, thanks so much for being on the show and letting us talk to you. Thank you. That was surprisingly awkward, watching myself. Oh, um, yes. Yeah. I'm not surprised at all that that felt <laughs> awkward for you. Uh, I was going to ask, yeah, seeing yourself on a giant screen and just listening to yourself while yeah, you sit yeah, here. Yeah, no, that's what I do at home, but in front really? of all the people, yeah. Oh, okay, you were joking, because I was going to say, you just watch yourself on a giant screen at home is a, the strangest thing I've ever heard someone say. We, we have been on a lot of Zoom calls as a people lately. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and Alexandra tends to place herself in front of a giant projection of herself. Yeah. That's your background. Yeah, yeah. You live talking to yourself. Um, well, we are obviously going to talk to you a ton over the course of this show about your research and what it's like to be a dog scientist. But uh, it's now, this is our chance to ask our very first questions of a dog cognition expert. So we call this, you do what? And Josh, what is the first question that you want to ask a dog scientist? Why won't my dog sleep through the night? <laughs> Why is she up all the time like a human baby? <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, dogs are, you know, descended from wolves. Sure. Um, they are not diurnal. Mine's a pug. So. Yeah, no, <laughs> some are more descended than others. And oh, I yeah, love she's that. way far descended. <laughs> That's such a complimentary way of talking about a pug. Mm -hmm. You're so not a wolf. Well, she, but they're, you know, they're nocturnal animals. So dogs have actually... Be, you know, changed a little bit their habits to adjust to us, but they would be more happy to be nocturnal. So now they're usually sort of crepuscular, which is more often awake at night and mm -hmm. dawn. Okay. That word was crepuscular? And, yes, right. Okay. And, and we force them into being daylight living, <laughs> loving creatures, but they're not na naturally. This makes sense. My dog oh. is living her best life. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. She's partying all She's, night. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And napping all day, I napping expect. All day. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Thank that, you. That did actually feel like a lyric to a <laughs> off-brand Beastie Party Boys song. Party yeah. all day. <laughs> okay. Everybody knows that that's the pug way. <laughs> 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 that was way too easy for the credit you're <laughs> <laughs> You are too easily impressed. <laughs> um, Karen, what's the first question that you would like to ask Alexandra? Okay, so I think sometimes dogs look too different from each other to be considered the same species. Right. How weird would a dog have to look for you to be like, this is not a dog anymore? Oh, that's such an interesting <laughs> question um, yeah. I don't I can't even imagine if they had four legs they had a face yes. they had a tail I feel like I'd still might call them dogs I mean have we seen some of the dogs now are like teacup sized dogs small. yeah could right. it become small enough that you're like that's not a dog that's, that's a I, right that is I don't, a mouse I don't that's a bacteria so. scientifically yeah. <laughs> yes you know this as long as it had a little bit of that DNA and it could mate with another dog oh right? okay oh, so, I have a follow up question yeah could a dog mate with a cat I mean, legally. <laughs> oh, wow. In That's this state? <laughs> I don't hey, think they would bear viable young. <laughs> okay. Keep talking. The next that. thing though. Yeah. yeah, love is love. <laughs> I, I am not going to let you avoid answering that. We need I'm to no, know legally have, could that happen. They, legally, I don't know. Viably, they wouldn't have a viable offspring, but they could try. They could hook okay. up. Oh, now, this kind of sounds like back in the day when people had children out of wedlock and yeah. they're like, not a viable <laughs> offspring. Yeah, okay. yeah. That's a witch. Yeah. This is actually, this is one of the beauties of doing this uh, live. I refuse to believe that with the several hundred people on the live stream and all of the people in this room, that no one here is a lawyer. So who here is a lawyer? Raise your hand if you are a lawyer. Okay, yes. Can you please come to the front? There's a microphone right there. Thank you so much. Uh, please come right up here. Are you about to ask if it's legal for a dog to play basketball? <laughs> yes. Yeah, in, in so many words, yes. Um, will you just tilt that microphone so that it points right at your mouth? Um, uh -huh. Hi, w remind us, everyone, of your name. Did you just uh, tell her how to use a microphone? Well, not everyone knows. <laughs> not everyone's a professional wow, comedian. Oh, Mike's playing. Uh, <laughs> Mike's playing, yes. My name is Abby. Hi, Abby. Um, what type of lawyer are you? I'm a prosecutor. Oh, this is perfect! <laughs> I was so worried you were going to say, like, property law or something. A prosecutor no. is exactly we're who we want. We're going to put some dogs away for a long yes. time. <laughs> in, in your expert prosecutorial view, yes. is it legal for a dog to mate with a cat? So, under the laws of the state of New York, there are no criminal laws that prohibit any behavior by dogs. So. <laughs> okay. Wow. That is the Airbud Extended wow. Universe. Yeah. God. 
Okay. I, I, Your Honor, there's no laws against it. <laughs> it was done by a dog. They can't be controlled under our laws. Do you know how wild it's going to be when I train my pug to murder my enemy? <laughs> So the training of the dog to murder, that would be a crime by you. Okay. What? No, that doesn't seem right. Okay, what about... By that, that would be. By yes. that logic, yes. what, what about a business that seeks to give space for dogs and cats to hook up? Uh, I do not know if that's covered. Um, Definitely feels would, like we're getting in a gray a area, though. When you say business, who's paying for this service? <laughs> oh, no. I also do, oh, I would like no. to say, uh, okay, now. I, I think that could fall under some animal cruelty laws, so no, but it's I'm going to say oh, yeah. also no. But it's chill inside. It's consensual. Yeah. Um, really chill, um, very I, consensual. You, you have if it's consensual, why do we need a special place where we're forcing them to do it? We're no, no, it's candles. Yeah. Yeah. So no humans are in there yeah. being weird. Yeah. Yeah. Abby, you, Abby, you, you have... want to make love in a hotel. <laughs> okay, I, I hate yeah. that you said that, Karen. I really hate that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> But Abby, you, you yes, I, I understood. No, I understood. Um, Abby, you have exceeded my wildest <laughs> expectations. Thank you so much. Uh, please yeah. go down. All right. This is pretty sad. Uh, yeah, I, I do feel compelled to have a one quick follow-up. Alexander, I promise we will get back to you at some point, probably in an hour. Um, raise your hand if you are in any way connected to politics in New York State. Okay, All great. Right. Yes, uh, yeah. can you come up? Wait, uh, I... To the creation of laws. Oh, okay. Oh. Someone is raising their hand, but you are no one. Okay. Yeah, you're our volunteer. You, you we know you. You're associated with the show. I feel like they're not going to believe. It. That's fine. No one wants to uh, say that they're associated with that. Hey, listen, if you're on the live stream, you, we can bring the house lights down. If you're on the if you're on the live stream and you are in any way associated with laws, I feel very strongly that we need to get a law on the books that does make dogs and cats having sex illegal. Uh, I feel oh, really wow. strongly. Okay. And. Whoa. and Oh, oh, I'm the villain. No, I, I'm wrong side of history. I also want, I want, to, it's important to me now that we also make the business that CJ suggested and the man who yelled, I'm on the wrong side of history against the law. Okay. It's trademarked. It's my business. So nobody. Well, against my best judgment, uh, CJ, it is your turn to ask a question. <laughs> okay. So what's your first question for right. Alexandra? It's tiered. So dogs. <laughs> Dogs recognize a larger dog, and they're like, I won't mess with that dog because that dog's larger, Big right? Dog. And dogs also recognize, like, that dog is smaller to, than me. Do dogs experience, like, body dysmorphia? Like, I wish, I wish I was as big as that dog, or I'm too big as a dog. Well, like I, envy, like humans do, right, like right. envy. I, I, you're right that they recognize, you know, different sized dogs, and they seem to recognize them as dogs, right? Which is kind of cool, yeah. given how diverse they look. There are people who say that a lot of small dog behavior could be describable as trying to be b a big dog, basically. So not dysmorphia per se, but like sort of like uh, acting into a big dog's personality, right? Yeah. So if you might, if you know any small dogs, you know they're very, um, they're more energetic and the big dogs are kind of chiller usually. So it's just the little dog is trying to be bigger. Whoa, mm -hmm. big dog energy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I think. So it is envy. It's I like they're like, say that. I will act. They're aware that they're small. They're trying to, they are trying to, even. I think they're cool. trying to even the playing field. Basically, Alexandra does feel like this question is a little bit more about CJ and less about the dogs. <laughs> no, it's if it's okay for dogs, it sounds like you're just describing confidence and resilience. It does feel like we're getting personal here. That's right. Um, well, I do have a question from uh, the live stream here, which is, uh, can our dog expert provide, her name is Alexandra, can our dog expert provide any insight on the phenomenon of dogs and their owners beginning to resemble each other over oh, yeah. time? Yeah, this is a real, this is a real phenomenon where um, across cultures, um, people take photographs of dogs, pick, take photographs of people, and then ask other people to match up the person and the dog. And people are good at doing this pretty reliably. Because we, it might not be that we grow to look like each other, although that's possible. I think it's more likely that we choose dogs who we think are our kind of dog selves, mm. right? Like who represents you in a dog. 
and of course the dog's not doing much of the choosing back. But so it's mostly us saying, you know, it's and it's it's very it's very vague ways that they resemble each other. It's not just like big curly hair and retriever, something like this, or a uh, little tight little face and pug. It's more like. <laughs> <laughs> First of all, thank you yeah. for implying my face is tight. Yeah. Tight. That's nice. pretty sick. Tight little face goggleman over here. Tight. Yeah. The, sur the surface tension on my forehead is <laughs> yeah. It's, it's I mean, more of the overall... You could bounce a quarter off that forehead. <laughs> it hurts, but you can do it. <laughs> it's more of just the overall um, uh, sort of sensibility and spirit of the dog that seems to be captured in the person. So Great. Uh, so does that, is it... You know how like sometimes for humans you start sort of copying each other's facial expressions a yeah. bit? Does that happen with dogs too? No, they're not really great at making facial expressions. <laughs> oh. As it happens, they don't have a lot of, they do have one muscle actually that's kind of brilliant, which is, uh, which wolves don't have, which is a little muscle right here that allows them to raise the inside of their eyebrows. So, so oh. humans taught dogs how to be anxious? Well, probably. <laughs> it or does we taught them dogs, surprise? Right, right. It does make dogs look sort of more earnest mm. and responsive. And dogs who have this eyebrow raise at shelters get adopted more quickly. Oh, But wow. they all have, they, you know, they all have it. And we probably chose the ones, we liked the ones who could do that, you know, as a species. And we domesticated them and not the others. Because the dogs, you see them at the shelter, and they're like, hey, what do you say we get out of here? <laughs> <laughs> I think I like that one, yeah. <laughs> this dog's coming up. Again. But then you need a place. Yeah. <laughs> That's a really good point. CJ, yeah. this is not the time. <laughs> but it is the place. I'll go to dog tank. <laughs> I, think I, I actually think that brought me around. I think it should be legal again. Yeah. Um, yeah. I will say, and I also do want to provide an update for uh, those of you in the room. Uh, one person in the live stream has said, I will get you any legislation you want on this. I am heavily involved in lawmaking. So, uh, hello, hello. President Joe Biden? <laughs> That's right, Biden is on this. Big fan of the show. Yes, uh, yeah, Biden in our is, bones. this is what he's taking. He's like, we'll, we'll do some law dog, Jack. <laughs> uh, oh, here's a great question from someone in, uh, in the room here. Uh, does tail wagging in different directions have specific meanings? Mm. I feel like that's somebody who knows a little bit about dog cognition, actually. Wait, that's a real thing? Yeah. I thought that was just like a goofy question. Yeah, no, no. So, you know, everybody thinks the tail wag is just like a happy dog, but of course there are lots of types of tail wags, right? Like a big, loose, high tail wag is, is happy, but a, like a low tail wag between the legs is probably um, feeling worried or anxious. But as it turns out, there are people who actually have looked at the laterality, sort of the direction that the tail wag goes, and they find that when they see somebody they know, they tail wag more to the right. Mm. And when they see a stranger or, or an unknown dog, they tail wag more to the left. So they're still going both ways, but like more left or more right. So oh. I recommend oh. you videotape your dog's greeting and see if they recognize you. That wow, is... I'm not prepared for that level of heartbreak. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. when my do I show up, my dog's like, you're a stranger to me, my own <laughs> The next time we see you, you're going to have a crease on your other one. Yeah. <laughs> forehead. I don't mean, like my dog has paw Yeah, well, that's we, so oh. sad. I know, that's, that's how so I would sad. feel. <laughs> we have, uh, I'm going to get to a lot more of your questions, and please, if you have uh, questions, you can keep uh, writing them down. But uh, we are going to move into our next segment, which is one of Alexandra's most famous studies was looking at whether dogs make a guilty face when they get caught doing something wrong. Okay? So in this game... I am going to show you a photo of a dog, and you have to tell me what you think that dog just did wrong, or maybe nothing. Maybe the dog has nothing to feel guilty about. Yeah. You will be the ones telling us that, and this game is called Bad to the Bone. Okay, so, panelists. No, 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 no. Chris, you're doing a great job. That's Thank you a so great much. choice, Chris. Thank you so much, honestly. The graphic design here, everything is coming together. So, panelists, these, these um, all, uh, someone just said, that is so sad, and I agree. <laughs> I truly agree. Um, all of these photos come from the fantastic Tumblr account, Dog Shaming. So I'm going to show you the photo. You tell me the crime, or if you think there was no crime, that there was no crime. Okay, first photo. What do you think this dog just did? Does this dog look guilty or not? This dog is being racist at me. Okay. Wow. <laughs> I'll wow. just say it. Wow. <laughs> Still in the middle of the act. <laughs> wow. Caught in the in act. 2022. In 2022. <laughs> wow. I was gonna, 
I was gonna say this dog ate all of its human companions edibles. <laughs> oh, I can definitely see that. This dog is very high. Uh -huh. Th this dog like let another friend dog stay with him and then just accidentally saw him changing. It was like, oh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> okay. The door locks. Uh, these are all great guesses and I, I do understand where they came from. Um, let's find out what this dog actually did, if it was anything, and it was. Yes, this dog <laughs> ate a bottle of glitter, wow. and now that dog's poop sparkles. Okay. Um, I guess that doesn't preclude, also, <laughs> it is doing a racist impression of Karen. Yeah. Is this a Photoshop, or how is this? No, no, the dog was placed next to an actual description of its crime oh, to okay. shame it, and then okay. I Photoshopped the, for the first one the dog out of it. Uh, I'm like, what's happening with this owner? Help the dog. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, next one. Uh, you can see part of it, but not the whole sign. So what did this dog do wrong? What did this dog do wrong? Yeah. Obviously, see, you can see the words Mama Leaves. Any what? guesses? I, I, I'm seeing it in this dog's eyes, and it's voter fraud. <laughs> 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 when Mama Leaves, I vote thrice. <laughs> Any election, I can get my paws on. <laughs> yeah. I think this dog is cheating on its wife. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> when mama leaves, <laughs> mama gets to play. Yeah, yeah. With, with a cat or another With a cat at a certain business. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I think this dog was like, uh, was like outside a school with a sign that's like, they're brainwashing our kids. <laughs> <laughs> when mama leaves, they fill my baby's brains with craziness. Okay. Uh, the actual answer is, when mama leaves without me, I pull her shoe out and poop in it. <laughs> Wow. And there is the shoe wow. full of poop. Oh, no. Uh, okay. You know, Alexandra, you are nodding knowingly at that. <laughs> is that something you've seen before? It's what uh, she does when mama leaves. <laughs> <laughs> no need to comment yeah, further. No, yes. I, I can't I'm so sorry. Stuff. What did this dog do? Or did it not do anything? This dog was inattentive to its partner. <laughs> okay. <yeah. laughs> I've been focusing on my own happiness. I don't think this dog did anything wrong. This is a perfect dog. Perfect dog. So yeah. This dog, it, um, it went into like a Trader Joe's and then it kept going by the free sample thing, oh, making no. like kind of different expressions <laughs> and styling its hair differently to get a bunch of free samples of like a dip that it really liked. I gotta say, this absolutely does look like the dog that would do that. Yeah. Uh, here's what this dog actually did. I peed on a man sitting on the beach. Then I picked a fight with his dog. My dad's face turned red. We rent home. <laughs> wow, people are really on the dog's side. Yeah, well, yeah. not to blame yeah. the victim, but I do kind of blame the guy that got peed on. <laughs> yeah, what, what were you smelling like that made this dog mm -hmm. want to pee on you? And this is also a resonant feeling. D wait, what? <laughs> when, like, people, like, a lot of us have been in this situation. What I'm saying. Who are yeah, you say in this situation? That. <laughs> which which side? Come of, on, like some of like <laughs> CJ. Which some side of us of have situation? been in this situation? <laughs> like you peed on the man, or you've been peed yeah, on by a dog? Yeah, when you pee on the man, and then you have to fight a dog. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah. In that case, I agree. It's relatable. <laughs> I agree. I fought with a man's dog after I peed on him at the beach. Uh, and let's move on to the next one. Oh, no, that's it. Okay. Uh, so now here is the greatest twist of all. Oh. Alexandra, is there such a thing as a dog looking guilty? Well, there is. So we did a study of the guilty look. Um, but what we found is that they didn't show this look when they were actually guilty of doing something wrong. So we said, should I describe the experiment Please, a little yes, bit? Yes, so yes. we set up a... Because this is what I was interested in, is, you know, their look, a look of a guilty dog is very familiar, and everybody assumes this is because they kind of understand the rules of the house, they intentionally violated the rules, and now they're kind of fa facing their maker, as it were. So I set up a little experiment where I went to people's homes, and I asked the owner to give their dog a treat uh, and tell them not to eat it, just put it right in front of them and tell them not to eat it, then they leave the room. And the dog either eats the treat or does not eat the treat, right? And I call the people back in and I say, if the dog ate the treat, I said, you know, they uh, disobeyed. And I asked them to scold their dogs the way they would ordinarily scold their dogs, which was mostly people like saying very sternly, what did you do? You know, that was a bad dog. And if the dog didn't eat the treat, I, the owners came back in and I said, you should, you should just greet your dog like you normally would coming into the room, which was usually pretty happily. 
Um, and so then I was measuring how much guilty look the dog showed when they had eaten it or not. But half the time I misled the owners. So the dog had not eaten the treat, but I told the owners that they had. So they came in the room and scolded their dog, or the dogs, or the other way around, like they had eaten, had eaten the treat and I told the owners that they hadn't. So they came in the room and greeted them even though they were ostensibly guilty of eating the treat. And I looked at how much guilty look they showed in all the conditions and they didn't show more guilty look when they'd eaten it. They showed more guilty look when the owner came in and assumed they'd done something wrong and punish them. And that's when their ears go back and their tail goes down and they kind of look away and they look like all those sad face dogs in dog shaming. They're, it's basically a reaction to us in anticipation of our punishing them. It's a kind of a submissive behavior which is also really cute so that dogs don't get punished, right? They've learned that much. And, uh, but it's not an indication that they know that they did something wrong. How, raise your hand just if you're in the audience. How many of you are surprised that dogs don't actually know when they did something wrong. It appears. <laughs> wow, okay. <laughs> Fewer than I would have expected. So how many of you raise your hands and think that all along you knew the dog was just manipulating you with their faces? <laughs> okay, most people believed that. My Does dog specifically shows no remorse. <laughs> oh, okay. she's, called, she's Hannibal Lecter when she does what she's supposed to. Were you, it feels like most of the time when, I tell, when I've told people this, they've been very surprised, but this room, no. I get, I get about 50-50, which is the case with a lot of dog science where we're testing something which we already have an expectation about. So half the people say, I already knew that. Like, you don't need to do the science. I already knew that. And half the people are like, but my dog always shows a guilty look. And I get a lot of emails about that, actually. Yeah, I believe that. Yeah. Um, I, I want to uh, follow up on a few things, because um, we're getting some questions, both in person and uh, on the live stream. One is, this is very important, the dog tail wagging. Yeah. So when you said one way to the right means they know you, to the left means you're new. Right. Right? Um, this is extremely important. <laughs> Someone online is saying, left or right from whose perspective? Uh -huh. Great question. <laughs> Great question. <laughs> Is that stage right or dog right? <laughs> like that's what we're trying to figure out. Whichever way their dog wagged. Oh, wow. No, it's, it's to the dog's right. It's the dog's right because it's the okay. dog's so left So like we're behind there. the dog, the tail is moving, that's their, the right. The, go to their side, from the dog's point of view. From the dog's perspective. Right, right. Okay. Mm, yeah. I have Love a follow-up question. Is that okay? Sure. Okay. Um, <laughs> so if you wag your tail, does that also strengthen your glutes? And if so, if a dog <laughs> sees people it knows all the time, does it have a bigger right cheek? Oh. Wow. Wow. Mm -hmm. That's like science has not gone there yet. Yeah. So. <laughs> but you're giving me ideas. Get in. I guess I'm the future. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Hypothesis. This dog, this dog has not met many strangers. Its bun is huge on one side. Yeah. It tips That's over. <laughs> Walks in circles. Um, I have a quick follow-up on that. So if you leave for like a trip for a few weeks right. and come back, right. could the dog that's normally right wagging, start wagging left because it's mm. like there's some emotional distance here. Mm, mm. I think they pretty, once they know you, they know you. Or, yeah, oh. yeah. In so, fact, when they've gone longer, when you're gone longer, you get a more vehement, like excited tail wag. Oh. So a lot of people who say like, okay. oh, you know, I leave for five minutes, my dog is thrilled to see me. They don't know, they don't know, they don't have a sense of time because they always are wagging. There are researchers who actually looked at like how strongly they're wagging if you leave for five minutes or a half hour or a couple of hours. Mm -hmm and they wag more strongly the longer you're gone. Hmm. Wow. That, okay. that <laughs> sounds like a pretty fun scientist to me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, we have a lot of great questions from uh, the live audience, so I just want to get through a few. Um, one is, uh, now, this one I'm not sure you will have an answer to, so it's okay to just say you don't have an answer. Why is there no dog president or at least dog running mate? <laughs> okay, that's a good question. Yeah, I don't have that answer. Um, <laughs> Uh, why, okay, what does falling in love look like for a dog? Is it really like Lady and the Tramp? And then related question, <laughs> do dogs cheat on each other? Uh, dogs are promiscuous. So yeah, they do um, <laughs> cheat on each other. Promiscuous and in fact, dog. I don't know, I mean, probably <laughs> most people haven't seen dogs mate because it's not like a well, common speak part for, of our... We're not talking about <laughs> CJ over here. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, with other dogs. Yes. Um, <laughs> that's not the business. <laughs> it's dogs and cats. <laughs> okay. So many, many a person has not seen a dog mate. <laughs> so they, um, they actually, after they mate, they tie, they do what's called a tie, which is they're sort of stuck together oh. um, for a period of time. And this is so that, this is the male trying to prevent the female from being inseminated with another dog's sperm right away. When you right. say stuck together, yeah. is that 
physical or is it more of an emotional yeah, the, thing? <laughs> the penis is enlarged, engorged, okay. so they're Jesus. literally <laughs> stuck together. <laughs> Karen, you must have heard of boners before. <laughs> oh, no. This is, this is how all of our dogs came to be through oh, this wow. process. Yeah. So <laughs> you just gave us the birds and the bees talk, <laughs> but it was the dogs and the dogs. <laughs> Wait, this makes so so they're attached. Have you guys seen the cartoon Cat Dog? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So now we know what happened just before the show started. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, another one. Uh, do dogs find their human parents funny? Hmm. Oh. This is another one that's really Yeah, you know, what's, what's interesting is people yeah. haven't asked... Now, do they like Josh's dogs, humor or do they prefer right, like edgier right, right, kind right. of hardcore stuff? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, to me, that's kind of a cool question. The question is kind of like, do they have a sense of humor, right? Mm. And dogs, there is a dog laugh, kind of. It's a play pants that oh. they do during play with each other or with their person. It's like a breathy exhalation. Can you... <laughs> Oh, this nice yeah, that's yeah, a yeah. laugh. I've heard it's, this. Yeah, yeah, it's a laugh. It's different than the pants because they're tired or pant because they're hot or something. Or, but anyway, so that is a kind of laugh that they do, but they do it in play, but they don't, I don't it's not obvious to me that they do it because they see something funny. It's just because they enjoy themselves. So I'm not sure that they actually have a, a sense of humor. But when they, I don't know. When they poop in a shoe, <laughs> <laughs> that's a form of prank, right? Yeah. <laughs> but that dog did not look like they thought it was funny, right? Like I feel like they, when they oh, do well. something that's sort of, I mean, that Ashton it Kutcher could be funny that we think on. is <laughs> funny, the dog isn't also having a funny reaction. Yeah, they're, they're usually funny. looking unhappy that somebody you know, is reacting to them, so. Mm. Classic sad clown. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Um, but doctor, I'm Doc Liachi. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, Doc Liachi. Oh, boy. <laughs> okay, uh, this one is a perfect follow-up to what Josh just said. Uh, someone asked three questions. Who is the best boy who? Is it you? It's you, Josh. Oh, thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Um, why won't my dog Ogden eat his food for a couple hours? <laughs> the dog is named Ogden? That's right. Ogden. Yeah, it's got to be Dogden. Wow. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> why won't they eat their food? Uh, they're not... Hungry. Okay, well, <laughs> like, no, this, really. what? this is a real. <laughs> this That's is what you real? brought me here for. You yeah, really I took this tell. from a why did the chicken cross the road <laughs> kind of level. But no, it just it it just gets to an, an another I think bigger truth than the dog isn't hungry, which is that we assume the dog has the kind of same experience of the day that we do. We want a couple of meals in the day, so the dog must want a couple of meals in the day, so we give them a breakfast and a dinner or whatever, and then we're surprised if they don't eat it, but dogs just don't, you know, their forebears will don't operate like that. They're not like eating twice a day and sitting, you know, they eat whenever they can. They eat a whole bunch and then they kind of fast. Inter until yeah, they intermittent fast. So <laughs> if, if you gave dogs a whole bunch of food and then nothing for a while, they'd probably be fine, but the pet food industrial complex mm. doesn't no. really want you to do that. They want you to feel like you have to feed your dog twice a day. So maybe they're not hungry at dinner. So we're like, oh, it's dinner time. But our dogs are like, actually, I eat five small meals. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're like gluten free, and you're yeah. just giving them bread. <laughs> um, I will say also, of all the uh, industrial complexes, the pet food industrial complexes <laughs> seems to me like the least threatening to me. No, I would say scariest. Really? I would say that, and then yeah. military industrial complex. Yeah, yeah. Pet food before military yeah. industrial. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and then prison. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, well, listen. Since we are already talking about like how dogs experience the world, yeah. One of the huge obvious things that I think we maybe don't think enough about when we are humans thinking about dogs is that dogs experience the world primarily through smell. So, uh, in fact, Alexandra, you've done, I've talked to you about this before, it's yeah. so interesting, you've done a ton of research about how dogs primarily encounter the world through their noses. Right, and right. we have this tendency, since we're such visual creatures, to think about our, the world in terms of our eyes, but that's not how they experience right. the world. One of your studies created like a version of a mirror, but for dogs, there was a smell mirror, correct? Right, right. Exactly. So can you ex explain like what that smell mirror was? Why really? I did it. Right. Yeah. It wasn't actually a mirror that reflected their smell back at them, but it was an attempt to study something. Well, it was basically an attempt to study self-awareness in dogs. And in studying self-awareness in infant, anyone who can't use language, infants or non-human animals, researchers came up with this uh, study, which was basically you put them in front of a mirror, change something about their parents and see if they react to it as though they recognize themselves in the mirror. If you give a mirror to a dog, they're not that interested in if they like have something on their head or something like that. They're not, they're not concerned like we are if we look in the mirror and you see something <laughs> on your face. They don't try to remove it. But, and so some people say, well, that means dogs don't have self-awareness. 
but I thought, well, not really, because they're just not that concerned with like how they look. You don't see them spending a lot of time grooming or trying to make themselves prettier per se, but they are really interested in smell and how they smell and how other dogs smell. So I designed this kind of like a study which was basically giving them a reflection of their scent and then seeing if they noticed when something about it had changed. Mm. So we are going to do a version, not an exact <laughs> smell mirror study, but a, a related study right now. Um, we're going to do a similar experiment with our comedians, and it is called Smell You Later. And each of you was asked this. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. good. That's good. Oh, my God. That's so good. The, a light, even the fact that there was a light cue. I mean, the tech booth is in on it now. <laughs> 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 of all the people to be betrayed by. Uh, so each this week, each of you was asked to wear a white t-shirt while sleeping and to not wash it. So you wore these white t-shirts. Before the show, I put each of these t-shirts into a plastic bag and then I labeled them one, two, three, and then I also added one that was mine, four, and a another one that was a totally unworn, clean t-shirt, a control. So we put those into bags. You don't know what number your shirt is in. And uh, we are going to have you each sniff the bag <laughs> and then try and identify your own scent yeah. as well as the scents of the rest of us in which one is okay. scentless. Okay. So yeah, 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 I love yeah, yeah. that this is a game show, but it also sounds like your saw. <laughs> Absolutely, <laughs> yes. No, I yes. want you to sniff your scent. <laughs> Why isn't the game called Sniff the Bag? <laughs> yes, great question. Thank um, yeah. Yes. Oh my God, we yes. want a new host. <laughs> Uh, it's not. It is not too late to change it to sniff the bag. Um, okay, so um, if you can please, uh, Mike, if you can please bring those up, and we have our, our the National Academy of Sciences own Vanna White, who so you in the audience and the the live stream can know which number is what. We have a poster board that has the the numbers up there. Uh, Anne Merchant, please give her a big round of applause. Our Vanna White is going to walk with this board. She's going to hold it in a way that the comedians cannot see it, but that you can. And we will bring this back again at the end. But just so you know, um, comedians, those bags are all labeled. Yep. Open them up and uh, start sniffing. You may have to really get in on the... Um, I'm really worried that I'll be able to recognize my shirt by looking at it with my eyes. So uh, try to not use your eyes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> this one's not me. <laughs> <laughs> this one. This, wait, wait, let's keep it going. Uh, yeah, keep okay, it going. Okay. There's five. There's I, five. I just smelled five. Okay. And if you could kind of give us like tasting notes oh, as you're sure. going, that would be helpful I've too. I've smelled pretty fresh. I think it might be, I, it might be the unworn shirt. I'm getting after notes of grape. Grape, okay. I'm, get, I'm getting a subtle like cool or breezy toothpaste smell. Okay, that's wow. So far pretty good smells. Yeah, this yeah, yeah, one's yeah. hard because I just keep smelling the bag. Yeah, plastic bag is strong. I would try and get in on the armpits if you can. Those are definitely the smellers. I took it out of the bag. Oh, yeah. that's You could take it out of the bag and get into the armpit, I would I would suggest. I like I keeping it in the bag to puff the air. Oh, that's nice. Oh. Juice I, it up. Yeah, that's the real true sommelier. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just number three. I think I think so I if you follow three. the dogs, you'd like really get into, right? Like they stick their noses in things as part of how they smell so well. Yeah, okay. I think uh, please. Alexander, please give them some coaching on this because we do I want them to get into this. Be not this afraid. Mine. Don't, don't tell the people oh, so <laughs> which one yet. It might okay. not be mine. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this one smells pretty fresh too. I think the one that smells like me smells substantially worse than the other ones. Whoa. <laughs> this one's pretty funky. Okay, this I would say really good. let's Number now, two? Let's now try, and, uh, try and get to your answers of which you okay. think which is. Okay, okay this um, one smells like somebody who wears like a perfume or cologne type situation to bed. So I'm guessing it's someone who's in a new relationship. Okay. Ooh. Yeah. Wow. Ooh. Thank still you. Still trying. Yeah, still trying. That's uh, interesting because as far as I know, that's none of the people it could be. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is how we find out that someone has <laughs> been <laughs> someone, <laughs> someone has had a, a real change in their lives. Okay. okay. Um, and someone online asked, do dogs Sorry. primarily remember us by look, smell, or sound? And the answer is, it's got to be smell, right? They, they, they can recognize us, the way we look, but they definitely use smell. And you'll see those great... Um, one of the great examples of that is when you'll see videos of people returning, maybe veterans returning home after being away for years, and the dog is let out to see them, and they start barking at mm. the person. 
but then like the wind changes or they get closer and then boom, you know, they recognize and they're all like a puddle of, of tail wagging. And that's because the smell was, was determining, right? The vision, they recognize us, but we only, we, they really know us by smell. Okay. Um, someone online is writing with uh, all capital letters and three exclamation points. <laughs> air rate. So I don't know what that means, but um, just for you, that's I think that's air. a tip. It's, is that Wait, a like, oh, to let the to let the shirt aerate. Yeah. Uh, but isn't I think, that bad? Don't we want the, sh the smell to stay in here? Well, let's Maybe let's go down. Maybe the plastic so smell to aerate. Which which number do you think is? Uh, oh yes, let's hold that poster up one more time. Thank you so much. Thank so, you, Anne. Oh, I have. Do you want to smell this one? Yeah. This one has a strong smell. Yeah. Okay. Well, wait. Let me try that one again. And we will. Okay. That will be held up again once they say. So, um, which one did you think smelled like you? Which one do you think was yours? Wait. Um, and which one did you think smelled the worst? I have the same answer. Okay. <laughs> Gosh. Which one do you think is you? I think I'm number three. Okay, Karen. What, what do you five? think you are? This is five. Okay. Oh. I think. I think I'm two, and I think I smell the best. Okay. Ever. The best. Yeah. Great. I think CJ. I'm also number three. Okay. Uh -huh. okay. <laughs> Which one did you think smelled the worst? Um, that one, number five. Yeah, number five smells so bad. Okay. <laughs> I, I got nothing out of number five. Does that mean it's me? Wow. Okay, great. Could, well, that, could that mean that it's Sure, him? sure, you get acclimated to your own smell, right? People don't go around sure. thinking that they smell strongly, even if they do, because mm. you're adjusted to your own smell. And will you please now show the board to the so comedians? Fun. So who was, which one was itch? Number wow. one was control. Oh, wow. Number five, <laughs> which was universally rated the worst smeller. <laughs> I got nothing on number five. Okay, so two people said worst smelling, and that was me. Um, Josh correctly identified himself and said it was the worst. Uh, the yep. other two correctly identified I am the worst smelling. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. Karen, you immediately identified yourself. Yes. And CJ, you could not identify your own smell. Wow. Interesting. When <laughs> CJ was so zigged so hard on number four that I was like, that must be Chris. Because yeah. I was like, you, yeah. Because you were like, wow. this really has uh, these fresh notes and uh, Chris, new relationships. <laughs> yeah, that was the, oh, wait. the new relationship one? Oh, Which yeah. one was that? Wait, what a great question. That was four. That was four. That was four. So CJ, CJ, are you in a new relationship? Anything you want to say? You not, sleep with perfume not at on? this moment. <laughs> <laughs> you sleep in a perfumed bed, maybe? No. Are you sleeping around? Uh, I'm, I'm wearing deodorant. Okay. 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 <laughs> Period. No oh. further questions. No further questions. <laughs> there we go. Okay, well. Uh, Chris, I have some follow-up questions about your smell. Sure, yes. Um, I deliberately did not wear deodorant so that we would get like a true smell in the back. I mean, we didn't either. We smelled great. Okay, well. <laughs> I truly can't believe it. I was like, oh, yeah, no doubt about it. You're For yourself. Sure. Yeah, and I was humiliated. Yeah. I was like, oh, this is how people perceive me. I do want to say, um, someone, someone in the chat has said, I have smelled Chris in real life, and he smells fantastic. Uh, <laughs> Which I, I think is trying to make me feel better, and I actually just feel deeply disturbed by that. I do not know him. Yes. Uh, I don't know him, but I've hunted him down and smelled him, and I love the scent that I captured. Do you sleep in a dumpster? Do I sleep in a dumpster? That's what the, that's what the shirt smelled like? Wow. Uh, what did you, so I will say this game went differently than I thought it would. Wait, what did you think was going to happen? Uh, I thought it would be like a fun thing where you were all like, I smell like Karen. I smell like, I thought I was Karen. I'm Josh. But no, it was like, no, we, you smell like a dumpster. And this man is sleeping around and doesn't even know it. I, I also have to say, it's kind of... It's kind of depressing to be like, I don't know my own smell. Yes. Wait, can I be honest? The way I knew my own smell is because I've been eating a lot of peppermint bark in bed this week. <laughs> That's what it was. You used a toothpaste, right? Yeah. Wow. It was a toothpaste. It was I, I mean. This smells like Godiva peppermint bark. Wow. I, yeah. I do feel like I have known you for a long time, Karen, and I, yeah. I always feel like I can't be surprised by how Karen Karen is. <laughs> <laughs> but the sentence I've been eating a lot of peppermint bark in bed this week has added a whole new layer to my understanding of you as a person. Oh, I'm getting ready for Christmas. Oh, it's clear, yes. <laughs> Karen is truly been, an elf. I've been drinking a lot of eggnog in bed. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. A lot of eggnog, a lot of bark, yeah, a lot yeah, of yeah. strange people. A lot of trash. Okay, and sleep in a dumpster. <laughs> the ultimate end of, that's the end of the Christmas season. <laughs> they all go in the dumpster. I love that we all assume that Karen's bag was like a really fresh person, but yes. it's just being really into the season. Yeah, it's seasonal. Yeah, 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 yeah. And that's, that's like 
the cutest, freshest smelling way to be a slob, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, oh, I was eating peppermint bark in bed. Yeah, like, like the loneliest elf. <laughs> Well, that is good title for you for a memoir. Uh, so, Alexander, we talked a little bit about some of your experiments. You do some amazing ones. Um, I have a video of one that is another experiment that I love, which I call Puppy Limbo. Um, um, yeah. Can you explain what is Puppy Limbo actually trying to <laughs> test? Well, it's so what happens before all dogs go to heaven. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Puppy Purgatory, Puppy Limbo. So another way of getting at sort of this question of self-awareness of dogs is, is the question, which was kind of alluded to before in, in whether they recognized a dog that's bigger, right, or smaller, which is do they recognize their own body size? Do they have like a sense of their body size and who they are? And so um, we set up a little study where we asked them to go through an opening in a wall basically, and then just made the opening smaller and smaller and smaller until they couldn't really fit through it. But we wanted to see, A, how they try to get through it, and B, if they sort of recognized when it was too small for their body to get through, right? So well, this is from that study. So we have, we have this video. Um, let's play the Puppy Limbo video, and uh, please feel free to react as it, it goes. There's no sound. Okay. Do you want us to do the sounds? We'll, no, we'll you can. <laughs> oh, here I go, here I go. Okay. <laughs> Oh. oh, pretty good. These dogs are alive. See, that one yeah. had a big butt. No, he's not no. going to make it. Or she. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah. Wait, that was so cute. <laughs> yeah. Yes, I, please applaud, praise that dog. Good dog. Good dog. That dog was watching a ship leave on the other side of the door. <laughs> All we have to do is put the person, their owner, on the other side, basically, and then they're desperately trying to get through. Yeah. Oh, that makes it sadder. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, we don't keep them apart forever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it, it has the feeling of like the end of you know love actually like running through the airport to try and get to which the person. Which is sort of like what it's like living with dogs, right? Where they're always. Thrilled that's to see you when you've been in the other room. Oh, so. that's what you meant. I was going to say, <laughs> living with dogs is just like love, actually. <laughs> oh, wait, but I do have a question on that. So they're extremes of emotion. Yeah. Does it mean that, well, it, does it mean that they're kind of constantly in love? Like they're feeling what we feel when we're in love? So, you know, they do have the same sort of love hormone running through their brains, the oxytocin wow. hormone that we do, and which is actually pro part of the bond that we feel with dogs and dogs probably feel with us is that when, when you, especially when you come home again and you touch your dog or you look them in the eyes, we both get like this little oxytocin rush. So they do have a little bit of the love hormone, but it comes and goes, you know, it's not like always on, 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 you know, it diminishes as, you know, as they get bored with you during the day. But then the, you, can, you can be the love of their life again next wow. time they see you. Well, one of the other studies that you've done that I love is you have uh, puppies in your lab, and you have them solve those treat puzzles, yes. where they have to kind of solve a puzzle, and if they solve it correctly, they get a treat. And we actually have three of those exact same treat puzzles <laughs> that your dog subjects use in the experiments. I want to say, these are totally new, they're fresh and clean, they've never been used by dogs or by other humans, and we are going to uh, try and solve these puzzles. You comedians are going to try and solve these puzzles in a segment we call Are You Smarter Than a Schnauzer? <laughs> okay, here we go. Are you smarter than a schnauzer? Um, okay, so... Now, uh, yes, oh. someone in the audience just said, these puzzles are pretty hard, actually, which I think uh, <laughs> says the level of faith that the audience has in our comedians. Um, wait, uh, are those in the right spot? Uh, Mike, are those all in the right order? Okay, yeah. great. Um, so, Josh, what, we asked you ahead of time what your favorite treat was. Yeah. What, what was your favorite treat? I said Junior Mints. Okay, so we have Junior Mints loaded up in that one. Karen, what's your favorite treat? <laughs> I said hugs. <laughs> 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 I said sour gummy worms. Sour yeah. gummy worms, yes. And, um, and you could, there could be hugs in there. Um, and I said CJ. gummy bears. Gummy bears, okay, great. Um, so, we are going to have you each solve these. Um, there are nine treats. You have to get all nine. Okay. You are not allowed to use your hands. Um, so <laughs> do you use like elbows for stability, or is that out? Is so it mouth time? Alexandra, yeah, yeah, you what do you think? Your, your paw. Is it mouth time? You can put Chris? a paw on one, right? Yeah. You can put a, a paw to stabilize, but yeah, not a paw to, to like. They can't like 
use the paw to move things, right? We put well, like that's up this. to you. Well, would the dogs do that though? Would dogs do that? Yeah. Okay, the dogs great. Would so do you that. can use your you can use your little paws. Okay. As and we're long gonna as say we these keep are your it paws. A paw. <laughs> exactly. No, no, no. This is a, I'm gonna yeah, call this no a claw. Fingers, no, no fingers. fingers. You gotta yeah. go like a dog. That is a dog. You're actually doing the classic dog. Little crabby hands. You are. You are doing crab. I'll show you a picture. I've seen one. I've seen one. You know that actually does. That does explain some of CJ's questions. Are you confused between crabs and dogs? A dog. A good boy. Okay. Yeah. 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 Dogs. They only walk sideways. They live in the sand. SpongeBob's boss. Dog. They have so many legs. Dogs. Yes. That's, um, that clarifies things. Alaskan king dog. <laughs> Soft shell dog. Those disgusting dog eyes. Okay. So, um, you know, you convinced me that uh, that Josh, Josh and Karen are allowed to use paws and CJ can use claws. Uh, okay. Um, paws and claws. Paws, like claws, and jaws. The worst kind of surfing term. <laughs> yeah. Oh, no. More like a specific room in a furry. <laughs> oh paws God. and claws down the hall. Well, we do. We do have yet another better name, which is paws, claws, and jaws. So that's what you're allowed to use. Whoa! And, that uh, was really good. That was really good. <laughs> that was really good. That should be on screen. Okay. Fire. On your mark. Wait, what are we doing? What's happening? This, this looks, <laughs> we're what eating. We're, we're we move this and move, we eat the treats. You move, you move those so that you can access. If you solve the puzzle, each time you solve a puzzle, you can access the treat. You eat the treat. Once all nine treats have been eaten, you win. Okay, I have all a right. request. Can you guys not be silent? <laughs> yeah, wait, can you cheer? This yeah, would oh, be oh. so depressing <laughs> if you're silent. Definitely, I would say pick Pick your favorite person Whoa, and cheer for them. No, 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 no. And cheer then for them the way also you switch. Dog. Switch throughout. Switch. <laughs> rotate. Pause, Josh. <laughs> okay, great. Pause then. Pause. Wow. Pause Josh, then. Pause. It seems pause like then. Josh's pause. fans have managed to really infantilize him with that cheering. Okay. Just and chant like you are love. Enough <laughs> procrastinating to the puzzle solving. Okay. There we On go. your mark, get set, solve. <laughs> Oh, oh, they're going. Oh, Karen is licking parts that are not even connected to the puzzle. Josh seems to have access. Oh, CJ has access to one. <laughs> what? Oh, Karen is bobbing for apples. Josh has one. Okay, there we go. We have we have some motion here. Okay, here we go. Yes. Oh. <laughs> oh, these dogs, there's a dog fight. Okay. Oh, wow. Uh, CJ's getting affectionate with his puzzle. There we go. Yes, yes, yes. Oh, oh, oh. His claw. Oh, he's dumping. He's dumping it. <laughs> oh, wow. That crab went wild. Oh, so far, both of our male contestants have destroyed it. Karen is straight up cheating. 100% used opposable thumbs. <laughs> okay. right. I did not expect that it would take them this long. Okay, Karen has one. There's another one on the table, Karen. Okay, uh, let's see how much uh, farther we have to go. Oh my God, this is, this is how the next strain of COVID begins. Oh, wow. Is this what you came we here have, for? Truly, we have dissolved no. into. Oh, no. Oh, my. Oh, you not Sweet. <laughs> Sweet Lord. Okay. That's, I, think we've, I think we've accomplished what we wanted to accomplish here. Um, thank you so much. Please give them a big round of applause. Wow. The... Uh, the online audience has coined a hashtag, Claw Crew. Um, I will also say, we started out by doing a, uh, an experiment that was based on your dog experiment, and we ended with like a social psychology, how quickly will humans debase themselves experiment. Oh, yeah. That was surprisingly like what the dogs do. Is yeah, it, yeah. really? Well, they do get ever more kind of desperate as they go, right? <laughs> I don't know if I'd use Same that trajectory. <laughs> What the dogs don't know is some of us start off desperate. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, certainly, 
certainly an experience to watch that. Not what I expected, and I will never forget. <laughs> I was, I, I, my, my whole time, I really only had one thought in my head, which is, is there an adjective form of cunnilingus? Because <laughs> yeah. I want to describe what this was like later. <laughs> yes. Yes. And I, I think there has to be. Someone in the audience must know. Someone? Cunnilingi, that can't be right. <laughs> no, gross. Wow. I, I, yeah, gross. Yeah. I also, I felt like it shouldn't be a, a man telling me, but it did seem. <laughs> Cunnilingi, that's what it came wrong. I, um, I also, there's a... I would love to get the post-game interview from all of you. So There's that was Josh's take. Um, yeah. CJ? There was a part of me right towards the end where I was like, oh, if this was like a Ryan Gosling teen movie, this would all have been a prank. And you would have stopped eating, and I would have just been oh, on the ground. Oh, yes. Like, I got really into it, and then was like, am I the only one left? <laughs> <laughs> yes, absolutely. And then everyone's laughing at you, and they're like, wow. Yeah. I guess you really care about being smarter than a schnauzer. <laughs> <laughs> Go back to your old school. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Okay, and Karen, what was your uh, kind of post-game interview on this? I had a really good time. I kind of couldn't really move anything, no matter how hard I just sort of banged my head into it. So then I thought, maybe I should push Josh over. Yeah, yes. I, remember I remember that part. <laughs> <laughs> surprisingly sturdy guy. Thank you. Yeah. 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 Surprisingly sturdy. Thank you. Low center in gravity. <laughs> yeah. Karen was, I look like my pug. <laughs> very impressed. Karen was the first to attack uh, one of the other competitors <laughs> and the first to just straight up use her hands. <laughs> and Ka I think I came in last. Yeah. <laughs> Karen has that big dog energy. Yeah, yes. she definitely had that big dog energy. My nickname at work is Big Dog. Have I told you this? You actually have told me this. Oh, yeah. I just want you all to know. I named Big you. dog. Yeah. I and love that for you that's, like, lovable, but for anyone else, it'd be like, we know Chris. Okay. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> they call me Big Dog, actually. Actually, all you right. should call me Big Dog. <laughs> at work, they call me that. Actually. And for you, you're like, please stop calling me in there. You're we can't Big Dog. <laughs> yes, that's true. It's that's me. true. I'm at, home. <laughs> I'm at home looking in the mirror being like, Big Dog, you got this, Big Dog. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> that's the saddest form of affirmation. <laughs> Affirmations are way sadder with the nickname. It's like, you're, you're good enough, and you're loved, big dog. <laughs> okay. Uh, I will say, uh, someone from the uh, internet has said, wow, I hope that's not how you do cunnilingus, which I don't know whether they mean, I hope that's not how you do it, or if they've been doing it wrong all along. Uh, and uh, my dog tosses, tosses his snuffle mat to get the treats out, so that move should be legal. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. sick. Okay. We um, figured it out. Well, listen, we're, we're moving right to the end. We're about to end the show. And Alexandra, you have this great new book. So I want to just quickly hear about okay. your new book. This is your new book. Oh, it yeah. is called The Year of the Puppy. <laughs> How Dogs Become Themselves. Will you tell us, uh, like, sure. what's the, the premise of this book? Uh, it's pu all about puppies. It's about the first year of a dog's life. It's kind of a scientific memoir. I realized, you know, I've always adopted dogs, like, many months or years into their life. And I had never known a dog from the first day of their life. And so we decided to follow a dog from the time they were born and then adopt them into our home. And uh, this is the story of that, as, long as, as well as the science of like early dog development. Hmm. Well, thank you so much. Um, I feel like we have gotten so much from you. It's been incredible to talk yeah. to you. I do. I, I do want to just say, uh, we asked for these questions at the very beginning. Um, is there someone who has something where they're like, I, I have to, this is a burning question, or I have something that is uh, coming up. Please come up to, uh, come up here. Yeah, come up to the. Can I just here? No, no, no. You have to come up to the microphone. <laughs> because they won't hear you online. That's why. But also because it, it raises the bar. So, are oh, wait, they. First, what's your name? My name is Olga, and I would like to know if they're actually smarter than a schnauzer. Oh, wow. The bar, this, Olga came up with guns blazing. Wow. <laughs> this, this show has provided more than, uh, more than the number of times I expected opportunities for my feelings to be heard. <laughs> so, well, uh, this, this won't be that time because um, despite the title, it wasn't a test of whether, of success for the dogs, whether they could actually solve the puzzle. We're actually just looking, these are called enrichment toys. You know, they're marketed as enrichment toys and we're interested in, if they are actually enriching for dogs to have them every day to interact with, or if maybe they're frustrating because the holes are really tiny and it's difficult to get the food out. And so yeah. it's, it's basically just a question. We're giving them these toys every day for two weeks to see then if their overall like level of optimism about the world 
improves or decreases. Wow. Okay, wow. well, let's, would you say, just with the thumbs up or thumbs down, would you say you that doing this Im <laughs> o increased your overall level of optimism about the world? <laughs> yeah, that, that seems right to me. Okay, yeah. Yeah. What would you say it enhanced like your your view of yourself as a person who is worthy of dignity and respect? <laughs> okay, great. Yeah. But we okay. did solve some problems. We did problems. solve it. Yeah, we that was pretty good. Oh, that's got to hurt. Oh, oh, wow. The follow up to you actually are worthy of respect was Josh trying to get a fist bump and not getting oh, it. Oh, that's sorry. Nope, that's all right. It's not uh, all about that's, my fists. Yeah. That's okay. Uh, you know, I think we have time for one final one. If someone else wants to ask something, um, does anyone else want to shame our panelists or have? another uh, question. It's fine if not. I can also ask one of the questions from here. You can ask a question. You can also ask for my phone number. Sure, yeah. <laughs> ah, okay. if, if, if you're out there and you're thinking, man, I could use some sweet, sweet bark tonight. <laughs> you know where to get it. Okay. Yeah, Karen's bark is worse than her bark. Oh, <laughs> the peppermint yeah. bark in her bed. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Karen's bark is worse than her bite. Okay, well, you know, that has got to be the end of the show. We are, uh, we are coming to the end of the show, and uh, let's check in on the score. You didn't even know we were Wait, keeping what? track oh, of the no. score. <laughs> it looks like Josh Gondelman has the most points, and C.J. Hunt has the least. So, C.J., you won by having the most wrong answers. It's Thank called you. Wrong Answers Only. Wow, 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 wow. Big dog. And... Wow. Another way to look at it is that the only clear loser was Karen by not yeah. having the best or the worst. Yeah. 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 So before we go, final question for you, Alexandra. Why should people care about this research? Why do you think learning about dog cognition is so important? Well, I mean, they're this ubiquitous animal. They're living in your homes. They might be sleeping in your bed. I think it's worth spending a little time and asking, you know, what is their experience like? How do they how do they perceive the world, and trying to improve their relationship. And that's what the science is all about. So, panelists, that is what, oh, please give her a round of applause. Uh, we've heard a lot from Alexandra. We've heard what she thinks matters about her research. We've heard all about her studies. We know what she hopes that you take away from tonight's show. What will you actually be taking away from tonight's show? <laughs> so let's go down the line. Josh Gondelman, what will you be taking away from tonight's show? that um, dog self-awareness is linked to whether they know their own smell. Cool, great. Yeah. Um, Karen, what will you be taking away? I learned that um, uh, dogs wag their tails depending on where, you know, right or left, depending on whether they know them. And also if I do want to fight Josh, I got to get stronger. <laughs> <laughs> and CJ <That's> Hunt, right. <laughs> CJ, what will you be taking away from tonight's show? I'm taking away, I find your research really uh, dope thinking about human nature. So the idea that the dogs aren't mm. guilty, but we're making them feel guilty, mm. I thought that was so deep, and also there are tons of dog-based businesses to be had. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. And, you know, I have to say, normally I don't add what I will be taking away as well, because there's so much that I'll take away. But I want to say that I did not expect to take this away, that basically a dog can commit any crime in the state of New York, <laughs> and there's yeah, no way to stop them. Huge. So I certainly will take that huge. away. Um, thank you so much to all three of you for playing. Alexandra, thank you so much for being here. Thank you all so much for watching. That is it for tonight. We will be back online next month with another free streaming show. Uh, next month's show, you can register for that. It's free. You can register at labx.org slash WAO. In the meantime, though, another big round of applause to, to, for tonight's expert, Alexandra Horowitz, our panelists, Josh Donnerman, Karen Chi, and CJ Hunt. Thank you so much to everyone here at Caveat, the National Academy of Sciences and LabX, and all of you. I'm your host, Chris W., and this has been Wrong Answers Only. Thank you so much. Yay! Have a great night. Yay! T-shirt back. Yeah. Josh I took all the shirts. It was <laughs> <weird>. <laughs> they are not on my side. <laughs>